Many thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring this week's video. So as I sit here today, reflecting on the, the past few years of photography, one milestone stands out amongst them all, which was my decision to adopt and embrace medium format photography for capturing landscapes, which was exactly three years ago to this month. And for those that are regular viewers of the channel, you know I'm not a huge gear guy. I, I don't talk about gear much. I'm not a big gear review guy. But one thing I do appreciate is efficiencies along with uh, perceived improvement. Basically, does it simplify my life? And can I see an improvement with my naked eye? I don't really get sucked into vanity metrics on, on spec sheets with megapixels and dynamic range values. I care most about real life tangible benefits. And in this video, I'm gonna share with you what I learned from using a medium format camera for the past three years, the good, the not so good, and the things I had to, to adapt to and the things I had to overcome in order to use this type of a system. So I won't be covering anything spec related here, just real life things that I was able to see and experience with my naked eye. So to jump right into it, as far as the negatives are concerned, there's not, there's not a whole lot of negatives, but one of the things that I would say is probably one of the bigger negatives is, you know, a lot of people always say that the lenses on medium format cameras are incredible. There's usually more glass in, in a medium format lens. And the downside of that is generally these lenses are a little bit bigger and they weigh a little bit more. So I do have a, a, a caveat to that. I personally do not find that these lenses actually weigh more than say full frame lenses, uh, maybe just a tiny bit, but I really didn't notice that. But what I did notice is just the overall size of these lenses. You know, just to put it in perspective, this is a, uh, a, a lens for my Fuji X-T5 that I'm filming on right now, so a lens for a crop sensor camera. This is a medium format lens. You can tell how much bigger these actually are. So the, just the overall size of these lenses is something that is uh, it, a little bit of a hindrance because I've been really trying to use smaller bags because I've been traveling on smaller planes more, and a lot of times the bags that I carry on board sometimes might have a a difficult time fitting in the overhead compartment. So I'm trying to use as small of a bag as possible. And if these lenses were just a little bit smaller as far as the footprint, it would make that a little bit easier. But it, the overall weight isn't uh, that big of a deal for me or anything I really noticed. But now the biggest negative, in my opinion, is the long or the ability or lack of availability of a long lens solution. I have the, the 100 to 200 which is the full frame of equiv equivalent, which gives me maybe like 170 or 180 millimeters. That's really not a whole lot of reach. They do make a 250 millimeter prime, but it's, a, it's like a bazooka. It's a huge, huge lens. I personally love the 100 to 400 footprint. I had that with uh, Sony, and I really do miss that focal length. And but I, I understand the challenge. You know, you've, you've got a big sensor camera, it need to have a big lens to go across that entire sensor. So to have a long lens, like a 100 or 400, that lens is probably gonna be very, very large. It's gonna be heavy. And there's challenges in, um, in creating something like that. But that's something that it did negatively impact me because a lot of times when I was on location, I had to change up the system that I was using because the medium format system that I was using, the, the Fuji GFX 100S, didn't have the long range capability to capture the composition I was hoping for. So my workaround to that is using my X-T5. I mentioned a minute ago, I'm filming this video on now. And this right here, which is the 70 to 300, I'm sorry, 55 to, 55 to 200 on a crop sensor camera, which effectively gives me almost or 300 millimeters of reach. And that is much, much better than this. So whenever I need to use a much longer focal length, I actually abandon this system and use the Fuji X-T5 paired with this. So I would say that if you're thinking about getting the into the Fuji medium format system, that is definitely probably the, the biggest drawback for me is the fact that there just isn't a very good long lens solution for it. Now, as far as some of the positives are concerned, as far as just is how it affected me, I absolutely fell in love with the four by three aspect ratio. It's one of the reasons why I wanted to test out this uh, medium format system. Now, I know you're probably thinking you can definitely, you can crop any photograph mark into a four by three aspect ratio. You don't have to go to an entirely new system. And yes, you can, but there is something very exciting and there's something very tangible about being able to natively photograph in a four by three aspect ratio. Once you do it long enough, four by three aspect ratio feels like it's got so much room to breathe. I think the easiest way to explain it is after you shoot four by three long enough and then you use say a full frame camera, which is three by two, three by two actually almost feels a little bit constricting, almost a little bit claustrophobic in, in a way, but, th but uh, four by three just has a little bit more room to breathe. And it's just one of those things you just experience over time. 
but I've come to absolutely love the four by three aspect ratio. Now, one of the things that I felt really appreciated that I didn't know about so much was how much flexibility this camera would provide for me. Since there is so much dynamic range, I said I wasn't gonna talk about specs, but I, I honestly don't even know how many stops of dynamic range this camera has. It's a lot, but I really never need to bracket exposures with this. I can capture almost every single scene in a single exposure and be able to pull out very, very clean shadow recovery. So that definitely makes my life easier. I don't have to have perfect lighting conditions. I don't have to have those overcast days where it's just nice flat, even lighting across the landscape. I can shoot directly in the sun, have deep shadows in the foreground, and a lot of times still be able to get that in a single exposure and uh, recover any type of detail in the shadows in a very clean manner. So that is a, a real life tangible benefit that I experienced and it did, it made my life easier. It made me feel a little bit more confident in a lot of difficult lighting situations because I knew that the flexibility that this camera provided me would make my life just flat out easier. And you know, I'm, I'm honestly, I'm, I'm constantly thinking about, I should say not constantly, but as I was preparing this video, I was thinking, you know, did this make me a better photographer? And I don't think it made me a better photographer. I really don't think any camera out there can make somebody a better photographer, but it made me a little bit more confident in difficult situations and it sped up my workflow a little bit. So I, in that perspective, yeah, I think it did Im improve my photography to a certain extent. The other thing is the fact that you can crap, crap, crop in a lot with this, with this camera, you know, it's 102 megapixels. So there's a lot of room to crop in. Now they, uh, Fuji came out with the Fuji GF X 50 S I think is what it's called or 50, which is basically the same camera just with 50 megapixels versus 100. Now, when you compare the 50 and the 100, you really can't, I personally can't see a huge difference, but the big difference is, is you can crop in a lot more on the 100 than you can on the 50. And that is really one of the things that I absolutely loved with this camera is that, you know, you can capture a photograph on location, you get home, you can almost crop two separate photos out of it. That's how much resolution you have with this type of a system. And it's something that I really, really appreciated because I often will get on location, I'll frame up a, a composition I'm really excited about get it home on the big monitor, and then I review it, and I don't really enjoy it nearly as much as I thought I would, but being able to have so much latitude to crop it in different ways, you can, can, you can, can change it or alter it completely and still come away with an absolutely beautiful photograph. So being able to crop in substantially is a huge, huge benefit, and once again, that could possibly be something that made me maybe a little bit better photographer, but mostly a little bit more confident because I know I don't have to nail it in camera on location. I've got a lot of latitude in post-processing. I really like the fact that I can preview crops in camera so I can change it to a one-to-one -one aspect ratio. I can change it to a pano aspect ratio and be able to see it real time on the back of my camera. I think that's really cool. Uh, the vertical tilt screen. Now this is some, these are things that are kind of specific to the GFX system. So I can't really say every medium format camera has these kind of things, but it's something that I really like because I, I often like to shoot very low. I love to shoot in a vertical orientation. So being able to flip the screen out in that direction right there is something that I really, really like because it makes, it, makes viewing the, uh, the LCD much, much easier. So it's something I really do appreciate. Now, something I think is overlooked in photography. So UI, user interface, it's something that is, always talked about it, something that's very, very important in all aspects of our life. We all want a good user experience. We all want good user interface, but for some reason in the world of cameras, we are willing to completely disregard that. We don't really care what the user interface looks like. And what we really care about is the, the, the photos that come out of the camera. And yes, that is ultimately the most important thing, but I do put a lot of value in the user interface of a camera. At the end of the day, I wanna have fun using it. I want it to be easy to use. I want to enjoy doing it. So I put a lot of value in the actual experience of using the camera. And I have used uh, Nikon, Canon, Sony, and Fuji cameras. And I must say that the Fuji, I've used the X-T3, 4, and 5, and the GFX cameras. These are the most fun cameras I've ever used to actually use. And if you think about it, why should it not be fun? To photograph. It should be exciting to actually just use the technology of it. Now, maybe I'm a, a tech nerd. Uh, not maybe, I, I know I am. So I really do in, enjoy the, the gadgetry of it all. I really, that excites me. So the user interface of this system is very, very nice. And I think it's important. 
Now I didn't mention things like uh, the, the image clarity, image detail, the tonal range, the colors, because I kind of think it's obvious. You know, the, the, all of the, everything I just mentioned in this camera is, is, is world-class in my opinion. It's absolutely phenomenal. I've said it many times before and I'll say it again today. After three years of using this camera as my sole camera for landscape photography, this right here, is by far the best camera I've ever used in my life. Have I used all cameras? Absolutely not. But this is the very best one that I've ever used. The files edit well, the detail is incredible, but most importantly, I love to use the camera. I, I look forward to actually using it, touching it, the dials. I like that. And the flexibility that this camera creates for me is something that I really, really enjoy. And I, I now that I'm talking this through, I guess I could say that that flexibility is something that kind of made me, did make me a little bit better of a photography to have that photographer, to have that flexibility. I think flexibility is always a good thing. Now, one of the things that um, I would say really the only thing, I guess there's two things that I had to adapt to and overcome and how it affected me is one, I wasn't really expecting how shallow of a depth of field medium format would give you. It's why medium format cameras are so popular with portrait photographers because you can really throw out the background. There's a, a lot of depth or shallow depth of field you can create. In landscape photography, at least the way that I photograph, I generally don't want extreme depth of field. So I ended up having to focus stack more often than I really was used to. Even when I use F11 or F16, I still was, wasn't able to get the entire scene in, in sharp fo focus from the foreground to the background. But what it kind of taught me was that, you know, I, I focus stacked everything in the beginning, but now I very rarely do because I'm, I'm okay with the foreground being tack sharp and the midground being sharp and in the background being reasonably sharp, having that soft transition, that soft fall off into the background. Because if you think about it, that's how we see the world anyway. We see the world that way with our naked eye. We don't see a focus stacked world where everything is perfectly in focus. So that was something that I had to adapt to, I had to overcome, but it did affect me. And the other thing is the file size. Yeah, the file size on these it is larger than normal. There's a lot of uh, information captured with this camera, with the sensor. There's a lot of, of data that comes in one file. I believe if you shoot 16-bit raw, your file size is gonna be around 200 megabytes, which is a large file for a single photograph. If you shoot a 14-bit lossless, you're gonna be just under 100, which is definitely more, more manageable. But it wasn't a, a huge thing that I had to overcome, but it was something that I was aware of in the beginning. So those are the things that uh, I really, really enjoyed. Those are the things I had to overcome. And then the, the real negative about just the size of the lenses and the lack of a good long lens was uh, the things that really stuck out to me after three years of using this medium format system. Would I do it again three years ago, knowing what I know now? Absolutely. You know, it's uh, medium format photography is now more affordable than it's ever. Medium format digital photography is now more affordable than ever. And I'm really, really glad I made the switch three years ago. And it's just something that uh, I don't, I can't honestly, I should, now that I say that, I, say I can't honestly see myself using any style of system. And it seems like right when you put the, that type of a statement out there in the ethers when something happens and you want to change. But for, for the time being, I, I couldn't be more happy with this system. So if you are on the fence as to whether or not you might want to test out medium format photography, I hope the information covered in this week's video was helpful. And before I do wrap things up, I do just wanna say a huge thanks to the longtime sponsor of the channel, which is Squarespace, who I use for all of my website and e-commerce needs. Squarespace provides a robust and beautiful online platform to develop your website. You can showcase your photography using Squarespace's professional portfolio designs and display your work using customizable galleries in order to make it your own. And with Squarespace's online store feature, you'll have access to all the tools you'll need to start selling your physical, digital, or service products online immediately. You can even use Squarespace's new asset library so you can upload, organize, and access all your content from a single place in order to easily find and use them across the entire Squarespace platform. Platform. So if you're looking to start a new website or possibly upgrade your current website, check out squarespace.com forward slash Mark Denny for a free trial and 10% off your first purchase. So if you have any questions about medium format cameras or the Fuji GFX 100S uh, system series, however you want to say it, definitely let me know in the comment section below. If you have any questions about the quality of glass or, or any of the information that I covered here in this video, any information about just medium format photography in general, please leave those in the comment section below and I'll do my best to get back in touch with you as soon as possible. 
I keep having my hand on this lens and just kind of fiddling with it, resting my hand here. But um, as always, I really do appreciate you carving out a little bit of time to spend it with me here today. And uh, I kind of messed up my cadence of my, my, my sign off, my outro. But either way, I appreciate you for carving out some time and I will see you all next Wednesday. Bye.